Alrighty, my friends, we're going to graph the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. It's going to be short. It's going to be awesome. This is the differential form of the equation. And let's just jump into it. Okay? If you need to know how to derive the equation, I've got lots of videos on deriving it, but we're going to graph it today. And we're going to do that using an example. And this is the example. Calculate the change in enthalpy. This is the standard change in enthalpy for the freezing of water. And we're given some data. We're given change in Gibbs energies for various temperatures for the freezing of water. And if we see this first line here, this is zero degrees Celsius. At zero degrees Celsius, delta G is zero, which means water, liquid water and ice are in equilibrium. The two phases coexist at zero degrees Celsius. That's the melting point or the fusion point. But as the temperature gets colder, as we go below zero degrees Celsius, then water will spontaneously freeze into ice. To graph this, I'm going to show you a couple different forms of the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. Hope you appreciate going through this. Hope it helps, gives some value. So this is the differential form that we've seen. And we can also integrate this to get the integrated form. Okay. And one more form is, I say, another differential form, which they show in the textbooks. But if you look at this form right here, this is showing the change of delta G over T versus the change in 1 over T, differential changes. So this is like, if we think of a slope in graphing it, this is like rise over run. Okay? So if we graph a plot of delta G over T, T, this is like the y, D, this is like dy, think of it like that, or delta y, it's not a delta, but you can kind of think of it like that, uh, versus 1 over t, this is like the x, like dx, or delta x here. So dy versus dx, that's our slope, and this represents the slope. So we expect the slope of the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation to be delta h. And it's a straight line if delta h doesn't change. And this one, this is like y2 minus y1 equals the slope times x2 minus x1. So anyways, we're going to, we're going to do some graphing here to see how it looks. All right, so I'm in Excel now, and I've typed all the data into Excel, the delta Gs and the Ts, the temperatures. And this is our equation that we're going off of. So we want to plot delta G over T versus 1 over T. So we need to know what 1 over T is. So I'll type that in. I'll do equals uh, 1 divided by this cell, and then this one, delta G divided by T. And then I want to do that for all of them. So I'll just highlight it and drag this corner down. So now I have the 1 over t's in uh, Kelvin, 1 over Kelvin, and then the delta g's over here. And now I want to plot this, and I want this to be the y-axis, this to be the x-axis. And I already did that, so I'll just kind of move this over. And if we do insert chart, we get this plot here. So if you can read on this right side, this is delta g over t, kilojoules per mole Kelvin. This x-axis is 1 over t in 1 over Kelvin. And the data points are basically a straight line. If it's a straight line, it obeys the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. And this is our equation right here of a straight line. The slope is negative 5.725. So this is our delta H, uh, which I wrote down here. So this is delta H negative 5.72 kilojoules per mole Kelvin, which is our enthalpy change for the freezing of water. How close is this actually? Well, the literature says that the freezing point enthalpy change for the freezing of water at zero degrees Celsius is negative 6.01 uh, kilojoules per mole. So pretty close. It does change over time, but here it's pretty much straight. So we're a pretty good approximation with a percent difference of 4.8%. Alrighty, gang, that's how we graph the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. Good luck on your exams. Hang in there. I know thermo is not the easiest subject, but the more problems you do, the better you'll get. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.